Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. Few months ago, I posted a video on how to fix the problem of missing device driver during Windows 7 installation. In that tutorial, I used the Windows image tool from Gigabyte and in the video description, I added a direct link to Gigabyte utility support page from where you can download this tool. Recently, I got several comments indicating that the tool was no longer available on Gigabyte utility support page. So I decided to make this quick video as an update to the previous one to show a new way to obtain this tool. With that said, let's get right into it. So first, for those who haven't seen the previous video, I'm going to quickly demonstrate the problem on this HP 250G4. So here I have my bootable USB flash stick with Windows 7 installation file stored in it. I will plug in the USB stick and power on the PC. When the first logo screen appears, I press the escape key and then the F9 to boot to USB. Now this may vary depending on your PC manufacturer and system specifications. As you can see, the Windows 7 installation starts off with the normal process. Here I will hit next and then install now. And it says setup is starting. Normally, the next window I would see is the window that asks for the drive where I want to install my Windows. But instead, I see this window here which says, A required CD stroke DVD drive device driver is missing. If you have a driver floppy disk, CD, DVD or USB flash drive, please insert it now. Now, the primary reason for this error is that the USB controller chip on this laptop is not recognized by Windows 7. So even though we are able to boot into the USB, Windows 7 is unable to reach or access the computer hard disk because the USB lacks the required drivers. This problem is actually unique to Windows 7. If you try a similar installation process on the same PC with Windows 10 from a USB stick, you won't encounter this error. Also, if you have the option of installing using a Windows 7 DVD, then you should also get past this error. But what if you don't have an optical drive? Then this solution could come in really handy. The idea is to install the required USB driver in order to enable Windows gain access to the PC hard drive and proceed with the installation. Here I have simplified the driver installation process into two basic steps. They are very easy to follow and requires almost no technical skills. I assume you already have a bootable USB stick with Windows 7 installation files, otherwise you won't be having this error in the first place. So I won't get into details of creating a bootable USB stick or copying your Windows 7 installation files to the USB. The first step is to download the Gigabyte's Windows 7 USB installation tool. And for some reasons, this tool is no longer available on Gigabyte Utility Support page. So in the description of this video, I have provided an alternative download link for this tool. Just click on the link and it should take you to a page like this. On this page, click on the download arrow on the top right corner and the Windows 7 USB installation tool will start downloading. The file is just about 28 megabytes, so it should download pretty fast. So now that we have the installation tool downloaded, let's move on to the second step, which is the installation of a USB driver. To do that, you insert your bootable USB stick with Windows 7 installation. Then go to the folder where you saved your downloaded file. Mine is in my downloads folder. I'll move this file to the desktop for convenience. Now extract the zipped folder by simply right clicking and selecting extract all. Then choose wherever you want to extract to and wait for the extraction to complete. After the extraction, you should have a folder named Windows Image Tool. Open the folder, you should see this Windows Image Tool application. Launch by double clicking and click yes to allow the app to run. Here I should mention that the Gigabyte Windows USB installation tool is not a disk writing application like Rufus or Windows Media Creation Tool. It only modifies your Windows 7 installation files by embedding the required USB driver to it. So you don't have to worry about the files you have saved on your USB device. The Windows Image tool will not override or delete your files. So here you should leave the source path as non-add USB driver. Then in the destination path, select the USB that contains your Windows 7 installation files. Here the add USB driver to an offline Windows 7 image is selected by default. 
Now also select the Add NVMe Drivers option to an offline Windows 7 image as well. Automatically, the Add Packages to an offline Windows 7 is also selected. So you should have all three options checked. Then click on Start to begin the installation process. Now this will take a while in any case, possibly 15 minutes or more. In the previous video, there were several comments on this process taking longer time than most people expect. There are several possible factors that affect the duration of the process, factors like the processing speed of your PC, the version of USB stick you are using and also the version of the USB port you are connected to. With a USB 3.0 or eSATA USB port and a PC with higher processing power in terms of the processor and RAM, you could have a substantial time saving on the process. The good thing about this method though is that you only need to install the USB driver once and you can use it for multiple installations across different chipsets. So you don't have to worry about doing this over and over again if you are doing multiple Windows 7 installations. So here I'm going to fast forward this part of the video. So here we go, the installation is complete. Now we are going to try the Windows 7 installation again using this USB stick. So I'll plug it in once again and boot to USB. Hit next and then install now. And here is the normal window asking the drive where I want to install my windows. From here the installation should proceed smoothly as supposed with no more errors. And that completes the session. If you have any questions regarding the procedure in this video, you can post in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and share with anyone you think might find it useful as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for notification on future tech support videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.